Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results, predicted phenotype traits and GED match results of a Sarmatian from the Urals, from Bashkartostan. Uh, it's a woman, it doesn't have, it only has 27 Y chromosome reads, so it's a woman, it's not a man. Uh, when it comes to her uh, mitochondrial DNA, she's got mitochondrial DNA U5, I don't know where that's most common. But it's um, either U5B2 or U5... Yeah, it's U5B2. That's that's basically what it is. And now let's get into her phenotype. What does she look like? Well, she's got... She's got Middle Eastern eye shape with my eye shape predictor tool. Let's see how many SNPs that was done with. That was done with four, eight SNPs. So based on these eight SNPs, she's got a... Middle Eastern eye shape. Now what about her hair shape? Her hair shape is straight, followed by wavy, followed by curly, and definitely not kinky hair. So what about this? What? How many um, SNPs was this done with? This was done with four SNPs, okay? So based on these four SNPs, which is not so reliable, you can't really base stuff like that off of four SNPs, but she's got straight hair. This is the prediction we got for her. And for eye shape, I mean eye color, and hair color coloring in general. This is her predicted eye color. Let's look at the result. So the biggest category she scores is blue eyes, 31.8% uh, likelihood of blue eyes. Followed by that is hazel eyes at 25%. Followed by that is blue eyes with amber center at 20%. Followed by that is green eyes at 16. And then it's brown at 5 and dark brown at 0 0.6. So definitely not dark brown eyes. It's probably somewhere in the hazel to blue eye range for her in terms of uh, the range of possible eye colors. And she's got snub shaped nose and she's got blonde hair. Alright. So let's look at this, right? Let's look at let's look at uh, her two oka two. So she got blue eye haplotype two. She's got two two dot variants here. And this uh, is very predictive of this genotype is very predictive of this, so we already know, even though she's not genotyped for the main BH2 variation, because of this genotype right here, we know that she has blue eye haplotype 2, that's called imputation, and she's got light skin, let's see, here and here is not genotyped, so, well, here is genotyped, so she's got light skin based on her genotypes in SLC45A2, SLC24A5, and what about IRA4, she does not carry the hunter-gatherer, uh, blue eye, red hair, pale skin mutation in IRA4, which is pretty rare for like Europeans to have it. So it's uh, you know it's not surprising that she doesn't have it. I'm saying it's rare for Europeans. It doesn't mean it's more frequent outside of Europe. It's it doesn't occur outside of Europe, and it's rare in Europeans. Is is the better way to phrase it? Um. Okay. Okay. Well, this is this is it for the phenotype. So she's got blue eyes. Um, blonde hair, straight hair, uh, Middle Eastern eye shape, <coughs> and uh, and uh, snub shaped nose. That's all there is to know about her phenotype. Let's move on to her traits with my trait trait analyzer tool. So she's got GG here, which is the typical genotype for most humans. It leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia. She's not genotyped for the main BH, the main excuse me, uh, Valmet variation, so we don't know if she's a warrior or a warrior there, but she has GG here in MAOA, which actually leads to um, decrease, so this is warrior genotype in MAOA, so she's got warrior genotype in MAOA, and she does not have any no-go learner variants in DRD2, so more dopamine D2 receptors, slightly higher odds of schizophrenia and various other traits, or uh, illnesses, and She's got CC here in DRD4, which is a genotype associated with an increased likelihood of multiple mental health conditions, including novelty seeking, addiction, and intellectual disability. For the empathy gene, she's got GG here, which means two variants for lower levels of empathy, but she's not genotyped for these two. And the most important variation here is this, which she's not genotyped for. We don't know that. That's not in the file. Uh, for diabetes, she's got CC here, which leads to sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes. And when it comes to type 2 diabetes, there's also... Um, a couple of genotypes that protect her from that. So she probably is going to have a, a little score for type 2 diabetes because there's a polygenic score at the end. Uh, for Alzheimer's, no APOE2 alleles, so she doesn't have any of the Alzheimer's alleles. But yeah, okay, so not, nothing here as well. Not, nothing that would suggest she has all my Alzheimer's in the result. 
for myopia she does not have the GLE which would be protecting her against myopia but she doesn't have it so she's got a slightly higher or average odds of myopia uh, no micro P no micro P you know what that is I'm not going to spell it out for you but it is it is what it is it's on the screen um, eight points lower IQ than individuals with GG genotypes so lower IQ interesting IQ is I don't think IQ is a very good measure of intelligence to be honest um, Higher susceptibility to methamphetamine induced psychosis, not a carrier of albinism type 2, not albino, okay. And when it comes to the Oka 2 and blue, eye, blue eyes and blue eyes and blonde hair panel, this is what I've already talked about this. So the only thing that she's genotyped for is hair, and we know that she has blue eye haplotype 2, and she does not have blue eye haplotype 4. That's all we need to know. Now for polygenic risk scores, let's see what she scores. She scores average odds of schizophrenia, she scores pretty much average odds of diabetes, and she also scores pretty much average odds of Alzheimer's. Interesting, okay. Now let's look at ethnic calculator results, and let's see what she's going to score with the ethnic calculator results. So, th these results don't really tell us much, right, they don't really tell us much, but what, what we do need to see is the Vaha Duo coordinates for Oracle, so we copy that, and by the way, if you want to see if you want to see the the whole oracle with all of the reference populations, you can buy it here for two dollars. So I suggest you do spend a little bit of money and buy my oracle uh, that you could use these um, calculator results on. So who is she closest to? She's closest to Mananians, followed by Algerians, followed by Georgians, followed by Ashkenazi, followed by Iranians. Interesting. Where's the um, where's the Sarma Oh, here's the Sarmatian Urals. So the Sarmatian Urals. She is um two times closer to Mananians, actually, no, no, not, not two times, one point, one, it's, I think it's 1.8 times closer to Mananians than she is to Sarmatians, Urals, very interesting stuff. Uh, and she's getting one of those, a mixture of Ukrainian, plus Canaanite, plus Bulgarian, plus Spanish, Portuguese, plus Hoy Sun Hunter Gather, <laughs> very interesting result. Uh, you know, I didn't say that my calculator was at least the oracle may be not so good because you know it takes a while to populate it uh, but this is her result and now let's move on to g25 because g25 is a little bit better a little bit just a little bit <laughs> so for g25 uh, she's closest to tajiks followed by the tatars followed by also tajiks followed by komi followed by more finnogric people so it's basically a mixture of what she's getting? What, what's the mixture? The mixture is Tajik plus Finnish plus Udmurt plus Dargin. Dargin, in case you don't know, is a group of, uh, of people in Dagestan. So uh, a mixture of Western Asian plus Northern Northeast European. Now, when it comes to, we're, we're just gonna use this model model right here to model her as a mixture because these are the groups that are ancestral to uh, Sarmatians. There's the Sintashta and the Parhai, uh, which are ancestral to Iranic people, and then there's the Srubne and Krasnoyarsk, which admixture they might have picked up along the way. So let's see what she's going to get modeled as. She's getting modeled as a mixture of 73% Sintashta plus 17% BMAC. So uh, quite a lot of BMAC admixture, 17% BMAC admixture. It's kind of what's typical for all of these Sarmatians. And 9% Krasnoyarsk Bronze Age, which is a, you know, Uralic or finno ugric or like East Asian Siberian like admixture. So she does have a little bit of Siberian admixture as well and uh, that's pretty much all there is to tell about this sample thanks for watching my video until the end you can download her genome file in 23andme format from link which is in the description leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content goodbye